less waste and shorter print times for under $400? I'm interested. That's right, today we're looking at the Anycubic Cobra X. It's a bed slinger printer aimed especially at the beginner market, though some of its features also promise to interest the more intermediate or advanced user by the looks of it. I'll let you decide which one you are. So let's have a look at who this printer's for while we unbox it all and set it up. Then we're gonna assemble it and do some printing, and finally we'll check into what materials it can print and how it performs in general. And before we look at some of the time savings claims that this machine makes that set it apart from other similar machines, let's see if we can answer the question, why does this printer exist? Who's it really for? Okay, let's begin by talking about this machine a little bit. Why is it here? Who does it serve? Well, this one sits a bit closer to the budget-minded, beginner-friendly side of the spectrum. It's hard to say what the final price is going to be since there's early bird stuff happening right now. So depending on when you're watching, it's either $279 for the early bird price or $300 I guess is going to be the final price. It says it's discounted from $400, but those things always lie, who knows. For all intents and purposes, this machine's $300. That means this is slightly less expensive than the Cobra 3 V2 combo, which is a comparable machine. But it's also cheaper than the Cobra S1 combo, which is geared more towards the intermediate user. With it being so similar to the Cobra 3 combo though, what really sets it apart? We're going to get into that a bit more, but it kind of comes down to one major difference. And that's the Ace Gen 2 multicolor system. Because of that, this printer claims to have less waste than a traditional single nozzle multicolor system, which is a huge deal, but apparently it can print TPU as well. Don't worry, I tried some super soft stuff for this video and it didn't work and then I ran out of time, so I'm not really getting into that too much in this video. So I'll explore that in another video. Goodness, it is cold down here. Good thing I've got my Keo Prints hoodie available at keoprints.com. Ah, uh-huh. Yeah, you like that. Although I should have sized up. This one is a little bit small on me. Maybe I'm big on it. So for now, let's focus on the things that we do know about this printer. In terms of specs, the build volume's 260 cubed, but we'll surely test that later, because you're not fooling me, any cubic. No, sir. The hot end is hardened steel, and it can reach 300 degrees Celsius, which I think is plenty hot enough. And it features a quick swap system, which makes the move from different sizes quite a bit easier. The bed can reach 100 degrees Celsius, which again, is likely hot enough to make a grilled cheese. I still haven't done it. Let me know what printer I should use to make a grilled cheese sandwich, because I think I'm going to do that. The tool head itself houses the entire multicolor system, which is still pretty crazy to me. And then on top of that, it can be used in concert with four other Ace Pro 2 units to print up to 19 colors if you're crazy enough. The thing prints pretty quiet, it does AI detection, flow calibration, leveling, vibration compensation. There's a lot going on here, so we're just going to dive right in. Before we move into the printing, let's open the box, shall we? This machine's super compact, and it arrives in a similar format to many of these other modern bed slingers. The gantry and Z-axis structure arrives separate from the body of the machine, and it all ships super neatly and pretty well secured. That's good, because some of the FedEx dudes that come around... not FedEx. That's good because some of the individuals that put packages on my porch must do MMA at night or something because they're determined to make sure those boxes slam into my concrete porch as hard as possible. And boy, do they hate it when a box remains intact. But with this machine being just metal and plastic without any glass panels... Man, this sucks. We survived. So the tool head's beefy and it's secured with an intentional amount of foam. It comes pre-installed on the gantry assembly, which is likely speaking to the fact that this machine's meant to have you printing pretty fast. I think I was printing in less than an hour, which is pretty good for stopping every 20 seconds to film. The lower half of the machine is the main body, and that basically is the only thing left in the box now. It's all zip-tied in there to keep everything safe from the MMA shipping company dudes. So I figured it'd be a good idea to balance it on the edge of this box here instead of simply setting it on the table that's six inches below it. That would have been more secure. Nope. Good thinking, Keo. Now, the accessories that come along with this machine are kind of the usual stuff. There's spare consumables and some plastic plates, tube management clips, things like that. And of course, there's the Allen wrenches that come with the machine that are kind of junk, but you keep them all in a messy drawer full of Allen wrenches that are kind of the same size, even though you don't need 70 of the same size. But one day you may so you keep them anyway. 
look, you never know, okay? Let's, we're not talking about this anymore. I'm keeping my Allen wrenches. But the thing that is a little bit different speaks to another feature that I enjoy about this printer. It's these spool holder thingies here. And we'll get to that because typically I throw away the spool holders. We've got robots that feed filament. I shouldn't have to have a spool holder for me to set the filament so I can manually feed it. You should know this about me. I talk about it often. Otherwise, everything here is kind of what you should expect to see. It's a bed slinger printer that ships in two pieces so you can throw it together quickly and get to printing. So let's throw it together quickly. As you might expect, the assembly process isn't too crazy. There are two main pieces and the number of accessories isn't too over the top for this machine. Usually we're opening machines that have a multicolor unit hiding inside of it. This leads to a bunch of tubes and power cables and things like that, but this printer, it's just got some spool holders and the gantry. And that leads me to the thing that I really enjoy about this printer. The spools all mount up top. If you remember my thoughts on the FlashForge AD5X, back when it was still working, I mentioned that I love the format. All the spools are contained inside the general footprint of the machine. And same goes for the Snapmaker U1, which is a far better machine than the AD5X. Absolutely purchase that machine. The spools go on the side and it just does what you ask it to do. And here we are with the Cobra X. It's the same kind of setup. These spool holder deals mount on the top bar of the gantry with these little clips. And this is similar to what you might see with the A1 and the AMS Lite from Bamboo. Except this one doesn't look nearly as silly. I mean, I feel like it doesn't look nearly as silly. This is more intentional and the Bamboo one kind of looks like an afterthought. Tubes going everywhere and stuff. Looks silly. Which one looks the least silly? The spool holders have this provision here for you to mount and route the PTFE tubes, which allows for everything to be neatly sent to the tool head. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The gantry mounts using these beefy screws that go into the base of the printer. Also, there's these plastic stop brackets here. Don't forget to remove these. They're just there for shipping purposes to keep everything in place. You don't want to power the machine on with these still in place. That would certainly be foolish. Interestingly enough, Anycubic includes a little magnet here to help remove these screws. It's like they know I'm a very shaky boy that needs help. Still, I managed to drop a screw into the little slot here, but the magnet helped me retrieve it just fine. That totally would have just stayed there if I didn't have the magnet. It would still just be in the printer, for sure. All the pieces you're assembling are super conveniently labeled, so even I can get it right on the first try. And we can move on to installing the wiring. And the gantry can be plugged into the base the same way I'm constantly plugging Mountain Dew into my mouth. How crazy would it be if Mountain Dew could sponsor me? There's literally no chance. Delicious. You know what else is delicious? Supporting our $2 a month Patreon. It's only two bucks and you're supporting our efforts to do this full time and you get some perks. Recently, I've been talking to one of our patrons about a machine that I'm not supposed to tell anybody about yet because they're looking at investing in it. You get that kind of DM power on our Patreon. Just saying. So, so far this machine seems to be a pretty cool combination. These plastic plates tie everything together in a seamless way, and even though it's awkward tipping the thing on its side to put the machine together, it is pretty painless. The only finishing touches needed from here are small things like the purge wiper for color change purge ejection, and a bit of machine setup. The printer features the whole host of self-calibrations including vibration compensation, it's got AI detection happening there, a whole bunch of other stuff. But in terms of setup, there isn't much different or special happening here, really. You just put all the pieces together and turn the thing on. And once it is powered on, it runs through its tests to make sure everything's set up correctly. It calibrates the PID, which I think has something to do with the hot end heat. I don't know. I don't know things. Why are you watching me? I don't know things. And then it moves on to vibration compensation and all that other stuff. And if you want to connect to Wi-Fi using the Anycubic app for print monitoring or mobile printing in general, that can all be set up straight away. These are the things that I like about Anycubic specifically because you don't need to have your computer, you can just download the app and it works with the ecosystem at large. And this printer specifically benefits from that access. Beyond that, everything seems solid. The touch screen's nice and bright, and it seems to be easy to use accurately. It doesn't lag or hesitate during input, and overall, it keeps the experience pretty smooth. But one of the things I'm not a huge fan of is the manual filament loading. I mean, likely the real problem stems from the fact that I have this machine positioned on a really tall counter, so the spools on top of it are extra tall. That's on me. But it is a little bit awkward to feed the filament from the spool through the tube into the tool head. 
Once you push past the filament sensor in the collector, the machine recognizes that you've got material installed and you can set your color and material using a decent amount of presets though. Once again, the machine seems to be very beginner friendly. The UI is moderately self-explanatory and there isn't really any learning that needs to happen here. In fact, if I were a beginner and I downloaded the Anycubic app, I wouldn't really need to do much else. I could start printing right now. They've got models on there that are pre-sliced, so you just load up filament and push play. That's pretty good. You like that? The future's now, friends. I like that. As is tradition on this channel, the first few prints included this Chihuahua. This Chihuahua model is the one that I historically start out with. His name's Nacho, after the best dog that ever lived, who coincidentally has been immortalized in this shirt that you can get at keoprints.com. Boy, what an incredible segue, but like, honestly, yeah, this hoodie's just a little bit too small on me. But looking at this model, we can gather a decent amount of information. From what I'm seeing on the standard size one, the quality's pretty good. The overhangs are clean, the color changes are great. I used a combination of this New Maker's Gray PLA, a Polymaker Black, and then this purple black dual extruded color shift thing, which is from Sunlu, and I think Overture's got a similar thing that I have used that I do like. You check the links below, it's all there. It looks like the flushing volume could use a bump because there is a little bit of bleed on this model, and that's typically the case on any slicer that's based on Bamboo Studio. Any Cubic Slicer Next is based on Bamboo Studio. Otherwise, in terms of hardware, this printer totally does well. And with that validation, I can move on to printing a whole plate full of tiny nachos. This is another thing I like to do with each new machine, and once again, the printer did not disappoint in terms of print quality. There was one issue, though. The AI spaghetti detection on this machine was going absolutely crazy for the whole print. I don't know if it was seeing these little tiny strings and sounding the alarm for that reason. Maybe it saw something in the background and that was throwing up an alarm. But the bottom line is this print was being stopped like every 15 minutes to one or two hours. Luckily, the Anycubic app made it easy to know when that happened and I could resume from wherever I was. But when the print was over, you better believe I turned off the stop print setting under AI detection. I'll just let my print fail. I don't want to deal with that. Now, after speaking with my contact at Anycubic about this problem, it sounds like I wasn't the only one having this issue, and since then, they've released a couple of firmware updates fixing this problem. Any banding that you're seeing on these models is a result of that pausing, but even with that in mind, they all turned out pretty great. There weren't any failures, nothing came detached from the bed, and since I had so many bed adhesion issues with my Cobra S1, I was pretty worried that I was going to lose a couple of these models. Luckily, it seems to have performed super well. All right, let's rapid fire through a handful of the other things that I've printed. First off, there was a friend of mine wanting a handful of these golf ball holders for him and his golf buddies. Bunch of dorks. <laughs> he sent me this model to print, which seemed a bit odd. I mean, why label it as a golf ball holder? Clearly it's a golf ball holder. You don't, you don't gotta write it on the thing, obviously. You know it's a golf ball holder. I don't get it. Anyway, I used some of my favorite Sunlu PETG to see how this printer would handle it. And it went fine, but it did seem like there was an issue at one point or something. Some of the lettering on a few of the prints didn't stick because the filament didn't actually get deposited there properly. Not sure what happened with this, but I reprinted them and they came out fine. The layers seem to stack well and the surface finish using the Sunlu Glow in the Dark PETG is absolutely top notch. Once those were finished, I tried printing some super soft TPU that had no business going on this machine. The printer will print PVA, 68D TPU, and 95A. <laughs> but you know what it won't print? Anything softer than that. Ask me how I know. And finally, I printed off my build volume test to see how much of that 260 millimeter cubed build area was actually usable. The answer is 259 millimeters cubed. Thank you very much, Anycubic. You're not fooling anybody. As for the quality of this model, it's never great. It's a square, which means it's going to warp at the corners no matter what. But interestingly, the bed slingers usually exhibit more wobbling artifacts, especially towards the top of this print. This one's got them for sure, but I feel like they're less prominent. At any rate, the quality seems pretty good, but this did reveal two important things. For starters, I told the machine that the filament was all the same. I wanted to see if it would continue printing with a new spool when the other one ran out, because this is a feature that this machine has. I'm wondering if there was maybe a firmware issue that I've updated since then, because it didn't do that. But it did do something different that was pretty cool. 
Once the filament on the spool actually did run out, the leftover bit that was left inside the tool head between the extruder and the nozzle was ejected out of this little flap here. I think printers typically purge this when something runs out, but this one chucks it out the side. I don't know why it does that, but it's pretty interesting. All right, let's take a breath. Who needs this machine? In the age of tool changers, is it worth having this one around? Well, yes and no, but actually, yes. Here are my thoughts. If you're multiplexing filament, that is to say, if you're doing purges to swap out your filament colors, you're a little bit behind the times. Tool changers are becoming more common and way more affordable. But if you are purging and providing some kind of edge to make you stand out, I feel like there's still room for you to exist. Right now this printer's at only $300, and that's pretty affordable, but it also provides one exceptional advantage. Your prints are gonna complete a lot sooner because it's not wasting so much time flushing filament. The distance the filament has to travel to retract and make room for the next color is way shorter because the Ace Gen 2 is the tool head. That means a 22 hour print can be as short as 16 hours now. And that's a huge savings for anybody, but for me, the time savings are the ones that I chase. And although I didn't test this specifically just yet, the filament cutter appears to be super close to the nozzle, so the amount of purge needed for a color change to actually happen fully is a lot less. So these are two huge advantages, but is this enough to keep this style of machine relevant? Well, for now, I would say yes. It may become outdated soon with tool changers coming in hot, but for now, I feel like the Cobra X has a place. It's a solid setup that's done well with the task that I've given it. The print quality is great. The filament profiles can use a little bit of work, but it's like 80% of the way there. The slicer still reverts to Chinese sometimes, and it's aggravatingly slow. I'm never gonna like this slicer. Just use Orca Slicer. But the ecosystem as a whole functions fairly well for being so much cheaper than bamboo printers with the same offerings. So overall, I've got a report that this printer's pretty neat, and I'll continue printing on it for my print farm needs. Let me know what you would be interested in seeing me test with this printer. I plan to revisit the flexibles, but let me know what else you'd like to see. Of course, thanks to Anycubic for sending this printer over. If you're interested in learning more about it or buying one of these at the early bird price, check the link below. If you're not interested in buying it, don't let me talk you into checking the link below. I make money off of you buying them. YouTubers are biased, don't fall for the traps. Check out our Patreon as well as keoprints.com if you want any shirts, hats, or hoodies. And comment below what your favorite cheese is because I want to know who you people are that make it all the way to the end of these videos when I just ramble about stuff. Bye.